All right, let's stick with the markets now and bring in Paul Schatz. He is president of Heritage Capital. Uh, Paul, thanks for kicking off the week with us. Before we get into the broader market, just want your take on what we're seeing with this hedge fund uh, unwinding its position, seemingly liquidating and causing big drops in certain stocks today. It appears to be the banks. Last week, it was some of the media holdings like Viacom, CBS, and um, and some of the others, and Discovery. Uh, what, what's your take on this and how widespread might it be? Always good to be with you. My take is I'm not, no one can be surprised because we've had epic uh, greed and euphoria in the markets really since the end of October. What happens when you have this kind of behavior? People make egregious mistakes. Look, what in, you know, in the, in the Bush era in you know, 2005 ish on, the SEC allowed five investment banks to leverage 40 to one. In 1998, you had long-term capital, which was you know, arguably 100 to 1. So when people get really confident and hubris takes over and they, they go overboard, they go beyond the irresponsible behavior, they, what happens now is this is, forces people to lose confidence in the markets. It forces clearly the regulators to get involved, as, as they should, frankly. This is yet another I think it's a private fund, family office hedge fund, but I don't think it's regulated. And it appears through what's been reported that you've got an individual who is skirting the rules through using essentially non-disclosed, undisclosed secret derivatives called swaps where you can't figure out what someone's open position is. So once again, we're going to probably hear from the politicians like we did with GameStop, that this can't go on, it's rigged, it's not fair. And the problem is you get the few bad apples really painting a horrible picture of what goes on when people manage money. Paul, I'm really glad you mentioned the politicians because, of, of course, we all you know, witnessed a lot of those really long hearings after GameStop with Congress vowing to get involved on some regulatory uh, level. What kind of regulation do you think might be coming down the pike, if any, if there is an appetite to go forward with that regulation uh, because of the, the downsides uh, and the ripples that we're seeing from some of these risky investment moves? Well, one, I'm anything but a lawyer or a regulator, but I would say this, the playing field needs to be level. And as someone who manages money professionally, I'm all for it. You know, with GameStop, the problem was that you had people who own stocks disclose when they own 5%. When people short stocks, there's no disclosure. That's an easy one to fix. In this case, you know, the swaps market's always been this huge money maker for Wall Street. because And it's when people, when you have a position, it can be levered and levered and levered. And each prime broker, like uh, J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs, insert name here, doesn't know what the other one's doing. And it, and it can become this ginormous pile of leverage that only takes the slightest little prick to mix metaphors to cause problems to happen. And if you look at you know Discovery and Viacom and Game and and um, and Tencent. Last week, you saw literally just like a waterfall collapse. It's in like, it looks like an elevator shaft. So there are clearly these large funds that have very little disclosure requirements like this certainly need to have more disclosure in the swaps market. That's the, the swaps market, frankly, is the Wild West. And I'm sure I'll get a lot of hate mail from friends and old colleagues on the street. But the swaps market should not exist the way it is. It, it, it fully should be brought on exchange. There should be better disclosure and there should be better protection for investors. So, Paul, what do you do with those stocks that took a, a drubbing because of, you know, the mishandling of this hedge fund? What do you do with the bank stocks? What do you do with some of those media stocks that have taken big, big hits? Is this a buying opportunity? Well, for full disclosure, banks and financials are among our largest positions. I don't think the, the decline was big enough to, to, for me to say, whoa, let's go buy some more. I think at its worst, maybe the bank's banks were down a percent, a percent and a half. That's not even a rounding error on what has been a leadership group since the October 30 low. Regarding Tencent, we sold Tencent earlier this year. When I saw it begin to unravel, I, I said last week to someone, boy, this looks like something's going on with a forced liquidation. And when you see those waterfall declines on surging volume, if you're an investor, your my opinion is your best move is to wait don't tr don't try to step in there too early. Let the stock stabilize at least for a day or two. But I do think a company like 
Discovery and Viacom and Tencent, even though you've removed that 800 pound gorilla of a buyer, I do think those companies will eventually regain themselves and probably test their old highs sooner than later, uh, over maybe next hey, quarter Paul, or two. Just want to ask you real quick on the broader market, are you part of the herd that are, that's moving out of growth and into value? Are you still doing that? I think the time to do that, frankly, was last year. So people debating it right now, I mean, you're, you're, I think you're halfway through the theme for the year. My theme was growth over value, anything cyclical for the first six to eight months. Well, you're halfway through it. If we do get a pretty good rally in growth, sure. Then I would say take move some chips from growth into other areas. But to do it now when energy, financials, materials, industrials have all gone strongly higher to all-time highs and the growth component has fallen by the wayside. I wouldn't do it down here. No, I'd wait for a rally. But I, I think, again, you're halfway through this theme of the year anyway. All right. Paul Schatz, president of Heritage Capital. Good to see you.